my friends and welcome back to the Scott Reed Project and what will be my final video of the year and what a year I've had on my channel and it's all down to you guys and girls out there it's been absolutely amazing so today I will be making a stunning Christmas ham uh, we will be boiling the ham in some cider and water and as you can see I've got two onions halved two carrots in quarters three bay leaves a little teaspoon of peppercorns, a teaspoon of cloves, and I'm going to use, be using the stalks of the parsley, the ends I will be using for a sauce. Now, what I've got here is what's known as a D-cut gammon, as you can see the shape. Now, what I like about this cut is, you can imagine a whole horseshoe, the round, this is cut straight down the length. And what I like about this is when it's cooked and it's glazed, you get perfect slices off obviously those big round ones as you start to slice into them get to the end it can be a bit hard to carve this is the perfect way to do it so the method I'm going to use obviously you may or may not know you can roast your gammon or you can boil it I like to do half the time boiling half the time roasting and then turn it up at the end to glaze it and the reason I do that is I think it makes a lovely succulent ham and you will see at the end the proof is in the pudding once I've glazed it as well with a Coleman's mustard and brown sugar glaze. It's rock and roll, baby. So the first thing I need to do then is weigh that fantastic gammon. Let's get that out of the way. Get the scales on board. Get my ham on. Get your ham on, man. That weighs five pounds. So I shall work out the timers in a moment. What I need to do then is get that straight into my pot. As you can see, you want a pot where it just fits, so we're not using up too much space. Just enough room to get our ham in and our veg. Okay, next on the agenda, the good old Rough Rider. I am a cider drinker. So you want about a pint of cider. You don't want to put too much in. So I'm going to put about a pint, a pint and a half. And then you want roughly half cider, half water but viewers of a certain vintage will remember when our glasses had the crown and the pint sign eh don't that take you back so like i said half water half cider so we'll get that in give it another top up you haven't got to be too fussy about your cider that goes in there and then i will top the rest up with some cold water. I've topped up the rest of my gammon. By the time I floated these veg in, we will be ready to rock and roll. So, get my onions in, get my carrots in, get some flame underneath it. Come on, baby, light my fire. Then I'm just gonna bruise these bay leaves to let it release their natural oils. My cloves in, the rest of my carrots, couldn't be easier this. My peppercorns, and like I said, the stalks of my parsley. And I just wanna bring that up to boil and then gently start to simmer it. How easy is that? While I'm waiting for that to come up to the bowl, then I just want to talk about the saltiness of your gammon. There's many ways to check the saltiness. One is you can leave your gammon joint or your ham joint in cold water overnight. Another method is put your ham in a pot, fill it up with cold water, bring it up to the boil and change the water. But to be honest with you, the gammons they produce now, they're not as salty as they used to be. And I have never had a problem with them being too salty. But the easiest and the quickest method for checking that is just take a little slice off the end and fry it in the pan like you would some bacon. And you will judge if it's salty or not. And if so, put it in the pan, bring it up to the bowl, change the water. Jobs are good. Done. Now, this weighed five pounds. So if we were going to boil this then, 25 minutes a pound. If we were going to roast it, 25 minutes a pound so five pound i want to do half boiling half roasting that's why i'm going to just gently boil this 
for 50 minutes. That leaves us the three pound. But what I want to do is on Gas Mark 4, I will roast this for 50 minutes again. And for that last 25 minutes, I will turn up the oven to Gas Mark 7. I will take the skin off, glaze it with a brown sugar and Coleman's mustard glaze. And then I will put it back in the oven. I will turn my oven up to gas mark seven. I shall put the conversions up when the time comes and obviously let it brown off and glaze. And every 10 minutes, just scooping up that beautiful, gooey, icky, sticky sugar and Coleman's glaze. So once this gets up to boiling speed, we should turn it down, 50 minutes cooking, and we'll get it in the oven. So my ham has been boiling for 50 minutes like I said 25 minutes a pound so what I'm going to do then is wrap it in this foil then give it 50 minutes in the oven gas mark 4 check for the conversion there and then we'll make the glaze up turn the heat up to gas mark 7 for the last 30 minutes and we shall have a fantastic ham right gas mark 4 50 minutes or 25 minutes a pound. While I'm just waiting for my ham to finish off in the oven, a gas mark four, I'm just gonna knock up my glaze. So I use equal parts. This is Demerara sugar. So what's that? Say about seven teaspoons. And then about the same. It's got to be that, you know, don't mess about with any other kind. This is the way forward. I know my friends over the pond, you can get this. It's amazing. So I'll just put that in there. And what I like to do, is just a little bit of that cooking liquor, just to let it down. And it starts to make an amazing glaze just look at that and that tastes mm. I mean judge it to your taste but I love that sweet oh yeah got a bit of kick my ham has had 50 minutes gas mark 4 that's what I'm going to do Cut the strings. And all we need to do is just skin it. Now you can let this cool down a bit if you want to. I just get my knife under. And you can pretty much begin to scrape it away. Just gently. You want to leave quite a bit of fat on. Just look at that. The old butchers, they used to eat that, that ham fat. And obviously parboiling it to start with, this will stay super juicy. Then all I'm gonna do, just score across it, make a diamond pattern. Don't be too fussy. Then all that lovely glaze will stick in it. And it's a case just painting that glaze on now what I like to do then I get one coat on put it in the oven for about 10 minutes take it back out give it another dabbing of glaze and the beauty of this the sugar gently catches and caramelizes and with that mustard the flavor is absolutely wicked so my oven, I have put up to gas mark seven, if you check up there, back in its tray, and in the oven for 10 minutes. Foil off, so it's just going in. Wanna keep all them juices in the foil. Just make sure we got plenty on, dab it on. Gas mark seven then, for 10 minutes, take it out, reglaze it, repeat that twice, 30 minutes at gas mark seven, 
and we'll see what we're left with. So the first 10 minutes is up. Just have a look how that's just starting to caramelize and catch. So I'll get a bit more on, give it another 10 minutes, and then repeat again after that. And that, building up those layers, absolutely gorgeous. And even if it catches and goes really caramelized, do not panic, because when we cut into it, I shall show you, it's just a very thin layer across the top. Not only looks good, but tastes out of this world. So another 10 minutes then. So after 30 minutes, and it should look like that. And that's what you want. You want all that lovely sugar to caramelize, make a nice crust. Look at that. Right, we'll just let that relax, and then we'll cut a few slices. I just wanna rest it, but let's just see what it's like when we cut into it. If you have a look there. See it? Hey, oh man. Here we go again. Stop it. Let's have a look at this. Oh, look at it. A piece of strings haunting me. Let's see if we can get a couple of nice slices off here. It's not quite set yet, but just have a look. Oh, how beautiful that is. Let's have a bit of close up action. And like I said, you want that to catch. Still a bit warm to cut, really, but I can't wait. And then you just have that lovely flavour. Well, my friends, what a stunning end product. Just have a look at that. It's absolutely amazing. And a great way to end the year. So I just want to say I apologise for the sound at the first half of this video I had a major microphone uh, malfunction can't be out you know you cannot go back and record this stuff so thank you for sticking with this and I really appreciate your time and support but please give this a go and I will see you in the new year and it just remains for me to say as per usual if you like what you're seeing here on the Scott Reed project please click subscribe down here also find me on social media Scott Reed or the Scott Reed Project on Facebook or on my Twitter, looking up there at the Scott Reed Project. Right, I shall see you lot in the new year. Have a good Christmas and a happy new year. And just have a look at that. It must be love, baby. It must be love. Oh, all the best.